Welcome to Intro to Factoring, the Sum and Difference of Perfect Cubes. So let's go over what the first few perfect cubes even are. We have 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27, 4 cubed is 64, and 5 cubed is 125. Now it is going to help you to remember these at least first five because then you'll be able to recognize when you have this type of factoring. If you don't remember it, and if you're wondering, let's say, is 125 a perfect cube, what you can do is go to your calculator, hit math, and then choice four is the cubed root. And you're going to enter 125, and it tells you the cubed root of 125 is 5. Again, that is math, choice four. So the first formula is when you have the difference of perfect cube. So this is the formula, and while it might seem complicated, it's actually not that bad when you know the tricks to remember it. The way you're going to get your first binomial, because it's always going to be a binomial times a trinomial, is you're going to take the cubed root. My cubed root of x cubed is x, cubed root of a cubed is a, right? Simple enough. Then what you're going to remember is soap. And what SOAP is going to do is help you know all of the signs. So SOAP stands for same, opposite, always positive. And again, if you need to pause the video, then pause it. We're starting with a negative. So that means your first sign is going to be the same, a negative. The next sign is going to be the opposite, a positive. And the last sign is going to be always positive, all the time. Then you have to figure out your insides. And in order to do the insides, you're going to remember square, multiply, square. And in order to use square, multiply, square, you're going to look at your first binomial. So x squared is x squared. You're going to multiply them, x times a is ax. a squared is a squared. Might seem a little bit complicated now, but it's really not that bad when you start trying them with legitimate numbers. But let's try it again with the other formula. We're going to take the cubed root of both terms to get our first trinomial. So I'm going to have x and a when you take the cubed root. I'm going to use SOAP to get my signs. So I'm going to have the same, the opposite, and the opposite of a plus is a negative, and the last one's always going to be positive. And now you're going to square multiply square. x squared is x squared. a times x is going to give you ax, and a squared is a squared, and you have the second formula. Pause this video before you go on to the practice problems. So this is the difference of, per uh, sorry, this is the sum of perfect cubes because 27 is a perfect cubed, as is a cubed. In order to figure things out, I'm going to take the cubed root of both. So I'm going to get a and 3. I'm going to use SOAP to figure out my signs. I'm starting with a positive, so I'm going to keep the same positive, opposite of a negative, and then I'm going to end with a positive. To get the insides, I'm going to remember square, multiply, square. Square the first, multiply them together to get 3a and then square the last. So your answer is a plus 3 times a squared minus 3a plus 9. What's important to know is that the trinomial will never be factorable. So once you do the sum or difference of perfect cubes, assuming there's no GCF, you are done factoring. Let's try it again. 
we're going to take the cubed root. So I'm going to have x, and the cubed root of 64 is 4. And then you're going to use soap. Same, opposite, always positive. I'm starting with a negative. I'm going to keep the same. The opposite is a positive, and your last one's always positive. And then square, multiply, square. X squared is X squared. Multiply them together to get 4X. And then square the last. So 4 squared is 16. We are done factoring. Also, if you don't want to, you don't have to write the SOAP or SMS out. That choice is up to you. Let's keep going. If you want, pause the video, try to on your own, and then come back after. Start by taking the cubed root, and we're going to have x and 5. According to SOAP, I have the same sign, which is a negative, the opposite sign, which is a positive, and then the opposite again. Oh, sorry, the last one's always positive, so a positive again. You're going to fill out the inside with square multiply square. Square the first. I have a sloppy. Multiply them together to get 5x. And keep in mind, even though this is a negative 5 technically, we ignore the negative because we followed SOAP for the signs. And now we're going to square the last, which would be 25. The next one is a little bit more tricky. It's not any harder. You just have to keep track of what you're doing. So you're going to start again by taking the cubed root. And you have to take the cubed root of everything. The cubed root of 8 is going to be 2. Cubed root of a cubed is a. Cubed root of 27 is 3. Use soap to get your signs. We're going to keep the same positive, the opposite of a negative, and then end with always being positive. Please be careful when you square multiply square. 2a squared, right? is really going to be 4a squared. When you multiply them together, 2a times 3 is going to give you 6a. And then the last one is just 3 squared, which is 9. So this is the more complicated version of SOAP, and you have to be careful that you're getting all your numbers straight. Now, the last one we're going to go over is what happens when you see larger exponents more than 3. You do have to know that this is still a perfect cubed. So, what happens is to take the cubed root of a variable with an exponent, because we're taking the cubed root, and cubed is associate with, associated with 3, you are going to divide the exponent by 3. And this works for anything. If you're taking the fourth root, you divide the exponent by 4. If you're taking the fifth root, you divide the exponent by 5. So when we take the cubed root, we are going to divide that exponent by 3. And 6 divided by 3 is 2. So the cubed root of y to the 6th is y squared. And we know the cubed root of 125 is 5. And now you're going to continue on with soap. So we're going to keep the same negative, the opposite of a positive, and the last one's always positive. And then you are going to square multiply square. Please be careful again, if you have 
y squared squared, that is going to be y to the fourth. When you multiply them together, you're going to get 5y squared. And then the last one, you square the 5. So you get 25. And you're done. But you do have to remember square, multiply, square, and soap, same, opposite, always positive, to help you remember the sum and difference of perfect cubes formula. And that's all for this video. video.